So this is just a quick um, quick outline of how to answer a hypothesis testing question uh, with proportions, using proportions. An airline promotion to business travelers is based on the assumption that two-thirds of business travelers use a laptop computer on overnight business trips. Part A, state the hypotheses that can be used to test the assumption. Part B, what is the sample proportion from an American Express sponsored survey that found yada yada yada. Um, and part C, what is the p-value? Okay, so how do we do this? Well, let's start with part A, um, state the hypotheses. Okay, so we're told that there is an assumption that two-thirds of business travelers use a laptop computer on business trips. So what does this look like? All right, how do we set up the hypotheses? So let's write down the claim. Okay, so the claim okay, is that the population proportion, so that's what we're assuming, the population proportion is assumed to be two-thirds. Okay, two-thirds, we'll round it to... Um, we'll round it to three decimal places and we get that. Now what is the counterclaim? What is the opposite of this? Well the opposite of it is that it's not equal to two-thirds, right? So they claim that it's equal to two-thirds, the opposite is that it's not equal to two-thirds. Now um, if you remember the claim with the equal sign is always your null hypothesis. So the claim without the equal sign or the other claim must be your alternate hypothesis. Okay, so how do we write this up properly? So to write this up properly, we have HO. The null is that the population uh, proportion is equal to two-thirds. And the alternate is that the population proportion is not equal to two-thirds. Okay, and that's part A done. Question B, what is, the, uh, what is the sample proportion from an American Express sponsored survey that found that 359 of, four, of 535 business travelers use a laptop, com laptop computer on overnight business trips? All right, so what is a sample proportion, okay? So remember, this is the population proportion, right? This is what they're assuming. They don't know the real proportion in the population because the population is infinitely large. So we can't observe every single business traveler. So this is just a working assumption. But what they did do is that they went out and they surveyed a bunch of people, okay? And what they found was that 359 people out of 535 used a laptop computer. And if you punch that into your calculator, you get 0 0.671, okay? And we call this P hat, which is our sample proportion. So we don't observe P, which is our population proportion, but what we can observe is our sample proportion. And this is the answer for question B. This is our sample proportion. Okay, uh, let's look at part C. Okay, what is the p-value? Okay, so um, this is the hardest uh, section of this question. Um, so let's get to it. So the first thing we need to do when, we, when we're calculating the p-value is we need to calculate the z-score. So remember, with a test of proportions, we're always using the z-tables or the z-statistic or the z-score. Okay, we're never using the student t-distribution or the t-statistic. With a proportion, we always assume we have the population standard. We, we always have the population standard deviation. Okay, so for part C, we have z. Okay, so um, to calculate your z-score, it's equal to um, our sample proportion minus our assumed population proportion divided by the standard error, which is calculated by p um, in brackets, 1 minus p divided by n. So it's the square root of all of that, okay? So if we punch our numbers in, if we sub these numbers in, okay, we've found uh, our sample proportion to be six, uh, 0 0.671 minus our population proportion, okay, divided by um, 667, 1 minus 0 0.667 divided by, okay, and n is the sample size, right, which is how many people we surveyed in our sample. And so if you think back to the question, we were told that we sampled 535 people. Okay, so this is our sample statistic, okay, so, so if, we, uh, if we, this is our test statistic, so if you punch this into your calculator, you'll get 0 0.196, okay, so this is our z-score. So the, next, so the next big step here is to see where this z-score lies in our uh, standard normal distribution. 
So let's draw our standard normal distribution like so. Okay, it's symmetrical around zero. Um, symmetrical around zero. Ah, uh, sorry, it's symmetrical around zero. And we have 0 0.196 here. Okay, now the p-value, the p-value for a two-tailed test, okay, is the shaded area of the curve, the shaded section of the curve that's towards the closest tail, okay? So this is a two-tailed test, okay? So what this means is that we find, we know our um, z-score lies here. It's the shaded region that is towards the closest tail, if it's a two-tailed test. So it's here, okay? This is in contrast to an upper tail test. For an upper tail test, it's always the shaded region for a p-value is always towards the upper tail. For a lower tail test, the shaded region for a p-value is always towards the lower tail. For a two tail test, the shaded region for a p-value is towards the closest tail, which in this case, it's towards, um, towards the right. Okay, so we need to find this shaded region here. So we so we know that the z that we know it cuts off at uh, 0 0.196, which is our z score. So we look here, and this is a cumulative. Remember, this is a cumulative standard normal distribution. They're all rounded to um, to two decimal places here. This table's rounded to two dec decimal places. So 0 0.196 is actually rounded to 0 0.2. So it's 0 0.2, which is this number. So it's 0 0.2. Two exactly, okay, which is that number there. All right, so what we find, so what we find is that this area here, because it's cumulative, that gives us the area to the left of that number we just looked up. So we just looked up 0 0.196, rounded to 0.2. So we found that this area here, okay, is equal to 0 0.5793, okay? But we want this shaded region here, this orange region here, okay? And we know that the area underneath the curve must sum to 1, so therefore this must equal to 1 minus 0 0.5793, which is equal to 0 0.42, uh, sorry, 0 0.4. 207. Okay. Now, if this was a one tailed test, so an upper or lower tail test, this would be your p value. Okay. Once you've calculated that, you know, the shaded region that you're after from your z table, that's your p value. But because this is a two tailed test, we need to multiply this to p value by two. Okay. It's, it's just the rule for, for a two tailed test. Similar to how if it's a two tailed test and you're calculating your rejection regions, the area of your rejection regions, okay, you um, divide your alpha by 2. Okay, for a two-tailed test, we multiply our sort of p-value that we find from our z-table by 2. So our p-value our p-value is actually equal to 0 0.8414. Okay, so because it's a two-tailed test, we multiply that by 2. If it was a one-tailed test, that would be our p-value. Okay, and we're done. Okay, and so to actually, you know, complete this question, um, we do not reject the null hypothesis. We do not reject the null hypo hypothesis. Why? Because our p-value is big. It's bigger than um, our alpha. Okay. So we weren't really told what the significance level is, but we usually assume that it's five percent. Okay. Um, and you can see that uh, zero point eight four one four is huge, right? It's way bigger than five percent. So just as an aside, remember we have our p-value rules. Okay. If your p-value is smaller than alpha, then you reject HO, okay? And if your p-value is larger than alpha, then you don't reject HO, okay? So what we found is we found a huge p-value, which is bigger than any alpha, you know, any 5% alpha, 10% alpha, 1% alpha. So we conclude that we don't reject HO, and that, um, and that yeah, and that two-thirds of, of business travelers use you know, their laptops. Um, and this sort of makes sense, okay? Well, this makes sense because, why does it make sense? This makes sense because our sample proportion, 0 0.671, is really close to two-thirds, okay? So it's evidence that the two-thirds assumption 
holds, or most likely holds, or is a pretty good assumption. So that's why we don't reject the null hypothesis, okay?